other thing is a lot of folks want to get rich overnight flipping houses. But the thing is, things are more complicated. So in today's conversation, I want to break everything down for you and explain to you the process it takes. And I'm going to explain step by step the process it takes to actually make money flipping houses this year. Okay, you have to do things logically. You need a logic. You need a code. You need a specific way of doing things. So I want you to stick around if you want to become a multimillionaire flipping houses. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sort of Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ever ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Now, let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, we want to talk about how to make money flipping houses this year. Okay, It's very important to understand when you actually approach the real estate market, you got to have a plan. you got to have a methodology to do, and th to do things properly and efficiently, and most importantly, cost effectively. You gotta save money, because it's a long-term game. You can't just get into this industry and hope to make quick bucks overnight, okay? So that's first, the first thing you wanna do if you, are, if you want to make money flipping houses this year, you gotta think about geography. You need to decide which neighborhood is best for you to invest in. It's not about just saying, you know, I love this neighborhood. I'm a probably I'm probably going to invest in that neighborhood. Okay, but what if the, the neighborhood actually uh, doesn't fit your investment portfolio, your investment strategy? There has to be some there has to be some kind of uh, synchronicity. Okay, you have to know the neighborhood. You have to understand the fundamentals of that neighborhood before you actually get into the, into into the neighborhood. Okay, so you got to ask yourself how much do houses sell for in this particular neighborhood. So if you want to make money flipping houses, you'll need to know the typical selling prices of homes in the region, not just the neighborhood, the region. So you have to actually cast a wider net. Okay, so you can choose projects that can be profitably flipped very important and you, can, and, you, and you need to calculate the supply months in other words you have to know whether or not it is a seller's market or a buyer's market in other words do we have a lot do we have a, a preponderance you know do we have a lot of houses in uh, the region in the neighborhood or do we have a shortage because as you know in you know economics 101 supply demand supply demand you got to think about that you want to look into market trends that will have an impact on home prices for example things like you know employment do we have a, a new factory do you do you have young families moving in because you know that young families always spend i mean we love as a as a an investor trying to flip houses you really want to love young families because they spend a lot they're vibrant they're dynamic you know, versus retirees who's actually, uh, you know, spend less. And that's understandable. OK. And you have to understand also when you do your analysis on geography, think about high demand neighborhoods versus distressed neighborhoods. OK, because the whole thing here is that when you think about high demand neighborhoods, you, you have a lot of competition. But when you have distressed neighborhoods, there is a profit potential to there. Right. But you, you have to be in, in it for the long haul. Because a distressed neighborhood might take five years to turn around or might take 10 years or might never, might never turn around. So there, this is actually the calculus you need to think about as you get into your money, your, into your house flipping strategy, into your house flipping venture. Geography is number one. Very important. Number two, you got to think about location. See? There is a difference between geography and location. So geography is the broader, the broader concept here. Now we want to zero in on the particular location you are trying to, you know, you, where you're trying to flip houses. Very important. So you go from the general to the particular. And it's important because the particular is part of a grander scheme. It's part of a grander context. And so you need to understand that. Okay. So you want to locate the, the ideal fix and flip property. Very important. So the thing here is that you may choose a property inside, 
you know, that community after you have recognized the neighborhood. You have to understand. So while there is no one size fits all method for finding properties to flip, most investors believe that referrals, driving around communities you want to work in, using the MLS and advertising are all effective methods to identify projects and learn how to make money flipping houses. So the thing here, you have to drive around. You got to see things yourself. You can't just be somewhere in California and trying to flip houses in New York. It doesn't work. Real estate, real estate needs and entails geography. Okay. So you, this is very important. So explore communities you, you would want to work in and look for badly maintained or unoccupied houses. That's one approach. Okay. It's the one approach for identifying properties to flip. So if you contact the owner, he or she may need assistance and may, and may be prepared to relocate. So when reaching out directly to the homeowner, investors have had a lot of successes. So you can do that too. Try to obtain referrals. You never know. Networking with other brokers is another method that you can use to discover deals. Okay. Try the MLS, the multiple listing service. So the MLS in, is in our view, one of the most typical sites for investors to locate fix and flips, okay, multiple listing services. So look for properties that are mistakenly advertised or in bad condition, or let's say have a tiny number of bedrooms compared to square space. It's very important because here you have an opportunity to actually, uh, you know, demolish everything and reconstruct and rebuild. They are important. So let's say a 3,000 square foot two bedroom house, for example can almost certainly be turned into a three-bedroom home, resulting in a significantly higher sales price. So this is the kind of thinking I want you to have. Think about ads, okay? You can do guerrilla or otherwise, okay? You can, you, 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 can, you, you can utilize advertising to identify properties to the fix and flip outside of the MLS. This might be a little difficult because you are seeking properties that are undervalued. However, a lot of fix and flippers have told us that they utilize classified ads to identify home projects. So, so you can do uh, you can do uh, you know the the so-called bandit bandit symbols. So you it, you know you can see that a lot of we, we buy houses. You know you know when you drive around the neighborhood, you see uh, the we buy houses signs. This is this is one way, or you can just send direct mails. Okay. Valuation is very important. Number three, you want to evaluate the property and the transaction itself. Now, if you don't have, uh, let's say you don't have the quantitative mindset to analyze that, try, try to surround yourself with folks who, who know what they are doing. Okay, you need to arrange a viewing and analyze a property in person. Or you can send one of your representatives if you, if you can't go yourself, right? But if you locate a listing that seems to have the potential for a flex and flop, you got to visit it. If at all feasible, bring your contractor along. You may actually develop a list of visible work that needs to be done and talk about how to earn money flipping properties in that area. Okay. So when evaluating fix and flip qualities, you want to keep the following in mind. First thing is you need to calculate what we call the after repair value potential, the ARV, the after repair value potential is very important so if you want to generate money flipping properties you need to make sure that your math is correct because you need to calculate your arv the after repair value you or your real estate agent will need to go back to your mls and look for recently sold properties that are comparable in size and condition to the property you are contemplating after the improvement to establish your arv okay i mean after the improvement very important so you want to make use of what we call in the industry the 70 percent rule so basically when you sit down and think about it really when you think about it the goal of any fix and flip project is to sell the house for a price that is not 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 only higher than the purchase price but higher than the purchase price plus renovation cost very important carrying cost contractor cost and other fees so to assess how to make money flipping houses successful flippers make use of the 70 percent rule in our view this is kind of cool so investors typically pay 70 percent of the estimated after repair value for example increase the arv of a single family property with an arv of 250,000. that requires 25,000 in improvements by 0.70 percent so what, what 0.70 so that, that's 70 percent so a quarter of a million divided by 0 0.70 is 175,000, right? So after subtracting 25,000 in estimated remodeling expenditures, the purchase price should be 150. 
Okay, so if you borrow one fifty thousand dollars from a hard money lender at twelve percent interest, you will have to pay for the following: the house was purchased for one hundred fifty thousand. So when purchasing, closing expenses might range from let's say one percent to three percent, right, of the sale amount. You have twenty five thousand in renovation expenses. When, a, when selling a home, real estate commissions may range from let's say three to seven to ten percent, depending on the neighborhood for single family homes. So when selling, closing expenses are around three percent of the sales price. So you have a forty five hundred loan origi origination charge. So assume that it will take six months from the time let's say where you you close on the buy to the time where you close on the sell. So this implies that there will be extra expenditures on the house for the next six months. So these are referred to as holding or carrying costs. So you got to really in include all this in into the math. Very important. Okay. One thing you want to do to really ease the pain on yourself, if you are trying to get into this game for real and really understand the fundamentals, is to get a home inspection from a professional. I mean, you could probably think that you have experience yourself, but the thing is, unless you are professionally educated to to or you, or you have the acumen to recognize the important things, the you know the de the defaults, the weaknesses, the deficiencies. If you don't really have a, a professional, it's better to spend one thousand dollars now and written that it, it's better to spend that now than regret than regret later very important okay so make sure that you surround yourself with the right team all the time and so you want to go you want to get a home inspection from a professional so after you have located a property with good restoration possibilities seek more substantial repairs that the house could need so in other words you need to have fresh eyes professional eyes so you may undertake a preliminary examination yourself but if you want to proceed, you will need to hire a professional house inspector. Okay, so the, in our view, in our research, and we have done research for the last 20 years on this subject, the top four deal killers based on our research, you have significant foundation flaws. That's the first thing that we see. So in masonry block walls, look for horizontal and uh, other major fissures. Okay, so repair costs may range from a few thousand dollars for a tiny fra fracture to tens of thousands of dollars for excavation stabilization and restoration now the thing we have seen here is that it really depends on the location okay it depends on the neighborhood too but this could be significant so number one significant foundation flaws number two chimneys that have been that have been damaged any form of chimney repair will be pricey simply because doing it incorrectly might result in tragedy right so it also frequently necessitates the use of large equipment like lifts or cranes right which adds to to the expense so that's the, that your overhead that goes up and some chimney repairs are just cosmetic but if the whole structure is separating from the house and the tilting it may need to be replaced entirely so number three we have wiring wiring so if you have dysfunctional wiring that's the problem any home with a fuse box has to be updated it is unlikely to have any contemporary wiring capable of supporting today's power requirements so rewiring a property with an accessible you know, attic and uh, an unfinished basement may not be prohibitively costly, but it will cost about 5000 to 7000 if the new panel, receptacles, and switches are added. So everything adds up. You have to think about that. See, we are in, we are in what we call continuous math here. You have to constantly add up, add up, add up. So if you have, for instance, all tanks buried in the ground this could be a problem so buried oil tanks which are more frequent in new england for example have become a serious environmental issue so even if the pro it has been uh, properly abandoned in place many purchasers are wary of uh, possessing one so if it's leaking getting rid of it becomes a hazardous waste disposal, waste disposal problem right while prices reaching tens of thousands of dollars for heavily uh, polluted soil so this is really important to think about I want to talk to you now about funding because I mean all this $150,000 or $250,000 where are you going to get the money from so let's just talk about that so you know for newbies figuring out how to finance and still earn money flipping properties might be difficult so you probably are in that category right now so many traditional lenders will not lend to residences in bad conditions or to borrowers without a steady source of income fix and flip expertise or a significant net worth so there are 
fortunately, based on our research, alternative possibilities. So you have uh, you have a, a lot of players, you know, in this industry. So when we talk about fix and flip financing types, you have a lot of players who do, who really don't care about your credit, your credit score. Okay, they will give you money because they know the property, the the transaction is collateralized anyway. The financing is collateralized. So you have hard money lenders. So lenders of hard money are small groups of investors who lend money to house flippers. The reason lenders of hard money are preferred by many house flippers is that they generally care more about the ARV, the after repair value of the home, than about the experience or qualifications of the borrower. So this is kind of cool. And uh, you also have uh, uh, lenders of private funds. So those are very similar to lenders of hard money. The primary difference is that they are generally smaller groups of investors or sometimes just one individuals, one individual. Okay. So with thousands of lenders of private funds to choose from, you can actually, uh, you, you can, you can actually get uh, a referral from a fix and flip pro or use a national directory. There are directories. If you have a question, please uh, put them below. We'll answer you. You, also, you can get loans from a traditional bank, but as I said before, you need to make sure that you are experienced, that you have the net worth, because banks generally are, are risk averse, so they will not lend on properties in bad conditions. So this might be difficult. If you are a new, if you're a newcomer, it might be difficult. You might also try crowdfunding loans for, for real estate. This could be a possibility, okay? So you can actually get lenders to actually pitch in. And so what you, what you need to look for in a financial institution, that you want to keep three things in mind. There are interest rates and fees, the length of time to lend money, and how soon you can access the money. Very important. Okay, so the the thing here is that there is a process in place if you want to get a fix and flip loan. So obtain approval, how much you may borrow, look at the loan to value, because some lenders concentrate on the loan to value ratio, which is the current value of the house. So with an, with an LTV of 80%, a 100000 Purchase price may go up to 80000 in finance, okay? And think about the interest rates and fees. Those are important criteria. Let me talk to you about the team. Another quintessential criterion when you think about making money flipping houses. Put together your dream team. This is very important. When we talk about, you know, your dream team, we are speaking about a constellation of, of individuals who must be qualified to get the job done quickly. Because the thing here is that, you know, if you have a cost, if you have cost overruns, you are probably will be out of money real, real soon. So you think about the service providers. Service providers are really important, okay? Because you are dealing with hundreds of contractors over the course of your career, if you do it right. But service providers means what? It means you, mean you need to hire a contractor. You know, this can be a somebody who is good in, uh, you know, electrician, a professional plumber, a skilled scheme coding, coding contractor, and a skilled general contractor may be required. So you have a large catalog of uh, professions that you will need in your team. So that's very important. You need to have. So if you want to find the right contractor for the job, the, the thing is just to uh, network. You want to you want to network. If you are a novice, if you're a neophyte in this industry, you definitely want to network. You want to ask for referrals. OK, ask around. And the thing is, it, you know, it might be expensive to hire contractors that have not been thoroughly vetted. So make sure that you vet them. There are a lot of uh, services out there to screen contractors. But if you need help, please drop it. Drop the question below. We'll certainly answer you. There is an entire process and we'll have we'll probably do a, another video on that where you can actually screen contractors. Think about the, 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 the house inspector. Very important. Somebody to have to lay professional eyes on the house and see if it's uh, still in, in uh, stable condition or not. Okay. And you need to think about the real estate agent. Very important. So this is the this is actually the the, uh, the one of the most important person that you need to have, because at some point you're going to have to not only estimate the house that you are trying to buy, but also sell it afterwards. Okay. Think about also attorneys and title companies. So you may not need a title and escrow company or a lawyer right away, but it is very wise to begin your search early. To find a great lawyer or title and escrow professional, obtain referrals from uh, seasoned professionals, okay? And one of the simplest methods is to look at a team to work with according to uh, a lot of our, uh, according to uh, our research and our, our own clients is to first pick a real estate agent you trust that employ their vetted team of pros. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Surya Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about how to make money flipping houses this year. So, section number six that you need to think about. You need to think about the remodeling part of things. You need to remodel the house, right? So it's time to finish your flip once you have studied how to make money. Flipping homes, you need to close on your fix and flip project, hire a contractor, and determine which work will, will provide the highest ROI. To ensure the task is completed on schedule within budget, this is very important, within budget, and to your satisfaction, you will need to put on your project management hat. You gotta be there. Okay, so you want to check in and chip in periodically. Every day, every three, every, every two day, every other day, or every three weeks, twice a week. You know, you just got to be there physically just to see so that your contractors know that you are there, that you are actually uh, checking on things. You need to assist with the material gathering. Okay, this is important. And remember to pay contractors. They should be paid. Do not try to play games with their money because otherwise your project will be, will be actually, uh, will, 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 will just be halted for a long time, which is bad for you anyway, because every single day that, 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 that the house is not finished, you are losing money. You have, over, you have overhead. Very important, okay? So the, uh, let me give you the top three in, in our research, the top three renovation ideas for maximum return on investment. So think about the steel entry door, window replacement, and kitchen renovations. Those are important for families. Those are important for you know home buyers. Okay, steel entry doors. So steel interest doors have typically provided excellent value for money. When it comes to reselling steel interest door, the in in steel interest doors generally return about 100% to 150% of their original investment. This implies that when a house is sold, the seller receives more money than they spent on the door. So quality steel interest door, uh, doors have a lot of curb appeal, what we love, which makes them more appealing to potential purchasers. What about window replacement? Now, window replacements are wonderful too. They are one of the most cost-effective remodeling options. So mid-range Let's say window replacements are expected to recoup up to 75 to 100% of their original cost, cost of resale. Wind or wooden replacement windows, on the other hand, offer a great return of investment at 80%. Okay, very important. You also have to think about kitchen renovations. So those are, those are little things that really are important. So we're talking about having uh, hardwood floors, okay, replacing old tile in kitchens and bathrooms is a very cost-effective and very simple repair that may dramatically enhance the home's appearance. We have adding a bedroom, creating an open concept, basement bedrooms, okay, bathrooms. Those are very important things. The last thing you have to do after you have done everything, you got to sell the house. You need to get the house sold. I mean, if you have done all the, the work, you got to really be in a situation where you have to sell the house and, and recoup your money and recoup uh, your investment. And I mean, re pay back the lender and actually make the money that you are supposed to make. So, you know, if you do it right, you can expect between 30 percent to 100 percent. Depending on depending on the uh, the geography, we have seen a lot of our clients who are basically doubling their their investment on every single property. OK, so please make sure that you hire a real estate agent, someone who really know their things. OK, so I mean, people have talked about a lot of investors are speaking about pros and cons. Of course, there are pros and cons to everything in life. So when it comes to selling, getting your house sold, you're uh, flipping of uh, your uh, your your flipped house sold. There are a lot of things you can do. OK, so let's talk about the pros and cons. So pros. A real estate agent will list your home on the multiple listing service and advertise it to uh, his or her own buyers as well as other real estate brokers. They will manage all marketing, showings, and negotiations as well as closing the deal. If they had done this before, they'll be able to teach you how to earn money flipping homes. Many buyers are just browsing via their agents in order to increase uh, the number of uh, purchasers who view a home on the MLS. Buyers agents usually only deal with qualified buyers, which means that your home will be considered by more qualified purchasers. Okay, so those are the pros. What about the cons? Well, if you use a real estate agent, the main con here is, is that it might reduce your earnings if you do not prepare ahead of time. Despite the fact that many sellers agents can negotiate a lower charge, the standard commission is still 6% of the sales price. 
and an unskilled agent might prevent you from successfully flipping properties. In our view, the pros far out, outweigh the cons. So we would say get a, get a, a state agent, a real estate agent, but try to look for a referral. Okay, And so every fix and flip investor needs two skills in our view. The ability to accurately estimate the cost of a home renovation. You need to be very good at it. You need to really understand the whole thing. And so that's the first thing. And the second thing is the ability to evaluate a home's market value accurately. So you got to know how much it will, it will cost you to renovate everything. And you have to know how much it will co it will actually uh, earn you. It will generate for you in terms of revenue and put to end uh, income afterwards. They are important. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just explain to, uh, explaining to you step by step how to make money flipping houses. So we spoke about geography. We spoke about location, 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 location. We spoke about valuation. We spoke about funding. We spoke about having a team of uh, you know professionals around you, remodeling, and then we spoke about sale. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.